Let's Talk World with Maria and we are now on our fourth segment and uh, I'm kind of you know I'm kind of sad uh, because fourth segment and I have so much more other things that I want to ask this beautiful lady right here but we are gonna we are gonna just focus with the Route 91 because we actually cover it several times in our TV show Maria and Joe Live TV it's because uh, I am a big fan of country music yeah and then also I have friends who are producer of country music yeah so I uh, and plus it's our town yeah our it happened to our city and it's, yeah and it, we knew it was gonna happen eventually it's just and we knew that I knew I was probably in Europe with their bombings and stuff and we knew that America's not exempt but it for another America to bomb another American is so sad and and it affected so many people's lives, and I know like three people that were killed that day, and you know like you you remember the events of the day. They, they still go through your mind. I have my shirt hanging on my wall that I was wearing that day, and there's parts of me that say, "Hey, this let's frame it, put it in the closet," and then I'm like, "No," and then I'm be like, "Oh, let's keep it out because I went through something horrific, and I walked out with just a sprained ankle." Yeah. So, or, you know, the foot so where you where you where you at when that happened? Uh, inside the ring, right by the stage, inside this inside the, the the concert area. I was one of the only people from our company, security company, that was managing a booth that it was for because we have people that sell stuff vendors. Mm -hmm. I was managing a security, ironically, a security company's booth for the airport to get in and out of the airport. Wow. So, well, you know what? We are not actually uh, covering or talking about this to actually uh, confuse a lot of, of people. This is just actually uh, just kind of remembering because she went through it. She yeah. were there uh, when it happened. That's why we are kind of like uh, yeah. talking about it because you know, you, if you notice or you you know a lot of YouTube about that event mm -hmm. happened actually been taken out from YouTube. Yeah, it's yeah. probably because of the police and, and, and the propaganda that went with it, you know, and, and I'm never going to say that any one, the, the one person who was shooting was responsible for it, I'm not going to say that other people were responsible for it, because I don't know. All I know is I was there, I seen people fall, I seen people scream, and I thought at first, well, maybe they got a gun through and then they got into a bar fight. Because it happens. Yeah, yes, yes. And I'm like, maybe our security wasn't doing their job right. You know, like, oh my God, you know, we're so in trouble. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this this firing is coming from everywhere. And I'm like, what? Did we get hit? Like, are we in a military war right now? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I and, know, right? And then um, as soon as we, somebody got me through the gate, as soon as we got through the gate, I remember taking my shirt off and going to run, and I twisted my ankle, and somebody caught me. And, and then I was running with an uh, off duty police officer. And um, at one point I got behind the squat team and then I got to the airport and we were stuck on the fence. And this guy, I sat down and I said, can I hug you? And he's like, uh, no, you can hug her. This is my wife. And he's like, and I, he, she goes, you're in safe hands. He's the head of security. He's way up there. He was a police sergeant. Don't come to find out. Um, and then they had a white truck and, and the shooting still was, was going on. And finally it stopped and this white truck came up and I said, can I get in here? And they're like, yeah. So I got down into the truck. They took us to a helicopter place, and then they let us in, and I, I handed out bottles of water, and this girl hugged me really tight. I don't, I didn't remember her that day, and she was from a company called We Serve. And then she's like, where, where's the rest of your company? I said, I have no idea. And then one of the guys from our company called me and said, where are you? And I said, I'm in a helicopter place. They're going to shuttle us to another place where helicopter, you know, and shuttle us out to another place. And so they did. We got in a van and we went to another place and we sat there and watched TV and I was right underneath where the shooting came, where the where it hit the bottom of the glasses because these women were above us singing, hey you, the, get away from there, the party's over here. And because uh, I remember them singing that song and mm -hmm. I couldn't get it out of my head for the life of me. And it's just, I remember looking up and I'm like, oh gosh, they're drunk, stupid idiots. You know, but now it was like, wow, they, they Probably some of them may have been killed, you know, or, or died or whatever, but, um, and, and after the fact, when you see that spot where you were at on TV, it's kind of like, 
oh gosh, <laughs> I'm like, I was right, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so lucky I to know. be alive, and then exactly, I'm, yeah. I'm texting people, I'm alive, and they're like, that's nice to know, and I'm like, no, really, I'm alive, and then, they're, they're like, then people are calling me up going, what the hell is going on, I don't know, <laughs> there's a shooting or something, you know, like there's millions of people getting killed in shooting, and I'm, I'm here, and I'm still alive, and I'm shaking up quite a bit, and and then they tell us to walk down the street, and we caught a bus, and then the bus took us to uh, Thomas and Mac, and this little Asian guy said, yeah, um, I was walking home because I was not far from Thomas and Mac, and this guy was like, "My wife will take you home." And I said, "Oh, thank you, I appreciate it," because my legs I just cannot move them anymore. And I, because I had worked that day, I came in at like one o'clock for my shift to ten o'clock and uh, doing security for them for the for the concert. And the night before, I worked at the D, doing at their vet center, doing security for them. So I, I've I've been working two jobs at well, actually now it's three jobs, but. I had been working two jobs and I was just exhausted and so the guy was like, well, we don't care where you live, you could live all the way in summer and we would take you home. And I said, but I really, I only live down the street and I really extremely appreciate it and they gave me a ride and I didn't remember him that day, And um, but they still gave me a ride and I got a ride with a stranger, but I was so exhausted and I knew that they were at the thing and then he knew where I was at during the... Uh, so did they, uh, so did you ever get connected with these people after? No. no. Okay. Well, we would like to thank you uh, for those. Yeah, people. I put on my Facebook blog. Thank you to lost to Metropolitan Police uh, Police Department for saving my life because there was that sergeant who grabbed me and stopped me from going onto the ground and uh, who screamed at me and told me to shut up, get down, and and file orders. And people were like, some people would have not done that. And I said, well, I was in the military and. He was like a drill sergeant, and even though it was the scariest time ever, having authority figure tell me what to do during this time is made me feel safe. Yes, yes. I yeah. mean, not safe, felt secure, like I had directions, I knew how to get out of the situation. Yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the Metropolitan Police, they were, they did their job. Yeah, that's an amazing story. See, uh, it's terrible what actually uh, happened to that day, and a lot of people still cannot believe it, and yeah. people actually are um, saying it. I've heard stories where it was fake. And it was like, yes. And you were like, you're acting. I said, yeah, I'm acting. I said, yeah, but I was not acting that day. Right. She was there. <laughs> no, so I was, I for was those people, scared. yeah. I keep on telling, a lot of people message me on Facebook and tell me that, um, stop, shut up what you're um, actually saying in the face, in, in your show, because it never happened. It's fake. Oh, and no. I told them, I told them, listen, I live in Vegas. I, I've seen it. It happened. I have friends who were there. I have, uh, I have like, um, producer who were, who were there. Mm -hmm. And don't tell, uh, telling, uh, telling us that it's a fake is actually disrespect no. yeah, to all the people who actually lost their lives, their fa those family that they left behind. Yeah, there was a guy, uh, Eric, from our, our company that died. He was only 21 years old. Wow. His mother lost his, his son. son his son him. was working a job at 21 years old. He had been working since he was 16 and wanted to be a security guard. Uh, you, you're never going to celebrate Christmas with him again. Yeah. The guy that uh, started the lawsuit against the guy who was the shooter, he was all, I worked with him on many events, and he was always this happy, good lucky person. He was alive, and he was a real human being, and he's no longer here with us. Um, there was a girl that got her arm shot. I mean, and the, there was a marathon runner that I talked to on the support groups, and she could no longer run ever. And I know, and I always say, I'm complaining about some stupid little sprained ankle when people were really shot, and I feel so stupid and complaining about it, and I can't run anymore, and it hurts, and I'm trying to get it back to normal, and trying to forget that it happened, but it happened, and people died that day, and people were wounded, and they were wounded way more than me, and and so I have conflict with like, oh, this ankle isn't that bad. It shouldn't, I didn't get shot, I'm not dead, I'm alive, I don't have a wound in me, but I have a sprained stupid foot, you know, it's, it's mine. Yeah, exactly. But it, it interrupted my life. And, and there are, I'm really sorry that, yeah, that it happens it, to you it, because you know, I know I was, it's a mental, you know. Yeah, and I was working uh, my job. I remember one of the guys that used to come to the strip club with me that day. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I'm so grateful, but I hugged him. <laughs> and, and he's Aww. like, what are you doing here? And I said, security. He goes, oh my gosh, you're a security guard now. I said, yeah. And he, I hugged him and his girlfriend got killed. Oh my God! And he yeah. went. He he went. I, and on Facebook, he was not 
wow, he was going through some mental issues. And yeah. my friends were like, he's probably suicidal and feels guilty because his girlfriend got killed that day. And I'm like, yeah. And then there was another guy who was supposed to work it that day, and his friend did, and his friend got killed. So to, for someone to say it's fake, these people will never come back. They yeah, will never, they never come back. You know, the on, you know, the, re, the least that you guys can do is just pray for it instead of saying that it's fake because it's not fake. Oh, uh, guys. No. It happened for I have my shirt that I was wearing that day. I have the flyer with the people that were singing and performing that day that I held in my hand that I, for some reason, did not let go. Um, I have my wristband for working that day. Uh, when you go to that area, I can never ever step on that property where it happened. I could go into MGM and work in the resorts, no problem, because I work for the Mirage now, and that's through MGM. And mm -hmm. I, I trust the security staff. Mm -hmm. And there was really, they had issues there, that internal issues that, that has been resolved and taken care of. And, and there's changes to security and to the motels, and people yes. are more on the guard, and we yes. don't let things float anymore, and we're proactive. Well, uh, let's talk about the uh, new security system that's coming up to Las Vegas. Uh, they will be... There will be, I know that it's already out, or uh, there are few uh, hotels already or resorts that actually sign up for that. The, uh, you see, when you walk into the resort, mm -hmm. you're, you will be uh, body scanned. Yeah, and when we go into when you go into our nightclubs, you are body scanned automatically in our nightclubs. Oh, you have that already, the security system. Yeah, and I, I was um, with, with uh, when I worked at T-Mobile for the event staff, I was doing that for a while, but I just got too tired and worn out from um, working two other jobs. Mm -hmm. so, so I was like, I'm not even having anything off anymore. I need, I'm just like, I mean, or sometimes I'm working two, jo two, two jobs in one day, so it's just too much, I quit. But uh, to go into T-Mobile, we will, you walk through a metal detector or a scanner, I will, yes, will want scan. you. And um, when I worked through Hackasan group, we, the first day of orientation, or second day of orientation, they give you a whole day of scanning people because uh, with the nightclubs, they don't want you to have any knives, any yeah, any um, any type of weapons whatsoever. And then people will. And the other thing about um, MGM properties, marijuana is not allowed on their properties. Just for the record, <laughs> I know. I, I yeah. I hope all the resorts actually uh, put that in. Yeah, order. they are because it's federal. It's federal property in your home. You can smoke weed. You can buy weed at the at the thing, but you cannot bring exactly. it into yeah. the nightclub. It's it's still considered a narcotic. And it's not allowed. Yeah, that's good to know. But anyways, yeah, with all the security, security, and yeah, we, we, no, we yeah. hope that it's not gonna happen again in our town. But who knows? We don't know. But you can't prevent. You can't prevent some some things from happening. And yes. you're gonna always have the mental mental people, mm -hmm. and they're gonna pass through. And but the best thing that you can do is always be aware of your surroundings this, and know how to get out, uh, and always know where an exit is when mm -hmm. you go into any venue. Mm -hmm. um, just like always know where you how to get out so that you're not confused if something goes down because not even a shooting you can have a fire happen and yes anything can, yeah any any other things but yeah, yeah. so but that's a good a good point and good tip to our viewers and also um do you know any support group uh, about you know about the um the round yeah, they, one? they have them but i didn't want to go to them because some people are really 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 depressed and sad and yeah like, yes yeah. i like i like that mentality you know yeah. you don't want to be actually it's not because it's bad but I some don't people be run down yes. so you know I am because i'm like like some days when i run i'm like okay my foot's doing better today okay. <laughs> but then other days it's like oh it just popped i love that i love this uh i love your energy i love your mentality you are a very uh, positive person and you actually put uh, put light to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's amazing. See, uh, this is actually the living testimony of the Route 91. So please stop saying it's fake. It was and not also, fake. if in case you guys you guys uh, think it's fake, just actually reach out to the group because you will see the group or reach out to people like her because you'll figure out that it's not fake. It's mm -hmm. real. And um, I would like to actually uh, thank you so much for being in my show, Erica. I would love you to be on other shows too okay. because your story actually fits in to other uh, other different show. And I hope we're gonna actually work in the future with our new new uh, program and new uh, new plans. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I am um, really really happy to that I met you. Awesome, yeah. me too. Yeah, yeah. thank you so Cheers. much. Thank you. Well, uh, viewers, there you go with um, Erica Lockett. She actually has a Facebook, so just go ahead and hit her up on, 
on Facebook and if you guys know more about her you can go in there and also she's an MMA um, fighter before so who knows who we're gonna have in the next future right yeah, I have a lot of connections <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot so of we, friends. yeah we're gonna actually uh, see our uh, we are transitioning our studio so we're gonna have a bigger studio yeah. because we're gonna have um, uh, performers music Oh, performers awesome. and this one so we're gonna actually have our studio with, yeah. with all the drums and guitars actually yeah. set up equipment. equipments and yeah you guys have to tune in on that or oh, wait for it because it's gonna come pretty soon mm -hmm. we have like three different producers that actually want to do it in our studio oh, right. yeah and if we can add MMA and UFC oh my god we have it all in Vegas yeah. and to um, and to let our viewers know, we have all the sports here now. In 2020, we're gonna be having football, and yeah. then we also already have the hockey, which is which a they did so good, good job. Yes, and then we we have soccer, we have everything. We have a pro soccer team. Yeah, we and have we have a semi pro uh, baseball team because I did concession stands last year for them. Yeah, it wasn't so, good money, but I it was a paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's paycheck, you know. We, yeah, it's we, we, take it. Or we take it, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> now I'm that. like, no, it doesn't pay enough. I have enough work. I'm too tired. <laughs> but we're having so much fun over here on Let's Talk World. But if you guys have a talent, you have a business, you have a product and services that you want to actually showcase, come over here and be seated right here to actually talk about it. Well, until next week, I hate to go because. I have, I'm having so much fun, but you know what, we have next week again. Please stay tuned on the next show and next week we'll see you guys back. Have a good weekend and enjoy your life, guys. Bye-bye. I always say you love somebody before you leave them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true.